I have a master's degree in physics, and my job is to wear horns in Germany. Hello and welcome back to Hell But Make It French, aka my YouTube channel. I make costume and props for a variety of things, mainly film and events, and today we will be talking about Gamescom. If you are not familiar with the wonderful world of gaming events, Gamescom is a large event dedicated mainly to video games taking place in Cologne, Germany at the end of August. There is a lot of work for people like me in this type of event. You can be working on a booth, some sort of set designer, you build special decoration for the booth, or you can be a character. You can play a character and interact with the public. And this is actually what I did for the latest edition on top of making the costume I got to wear. I was working on a Canadian game called Nightingale. It's set to release this month, if I'm not mistaken, and it was developed by Inflection Games. My job was to replicate the outfit of one of the characters, travel to Germany with the costume, and portray the character during Gamescom. Who the hell is sending me messages? It's not even a joke, this is a message. An official message in the Nightingale server saying the launch date is on the 20th of February, so you have the launch date. I was right, it is in February. <laughs> My character is called Puck, he is more or less the poster boy of the game, the main face, if you can call that a face. Despite not being a playable character as far as I know. But if you have seen something about Nightingale at some point, advertisement material or anything, you will know Puck, because it's probably who you saw. One of my concerns was my height. I am average size for a female, which means short. And since I was portraying a male character and having to interact with the public, I was afraid I would be too short. So I started investigating in the Discord server and I discovered <laughs> that this was a question and it had been answered. So Puck, my character, is canonically 140 centimeters, which is actually shorter than me. I know that in the world of cosplay, body type should not matter. But in this case, it's an official portrayal, an official version of the character. And I was afraid of the high difference between me and the other person on the booth who was playing another character. We had talked about this and I knew she was taller than me, but in the end, my character is canonically shorter than hers, so it was perfect. And if you want to portray a character that's 2 meter 50, just do it. I've done it several times. And I will do it again. This was the administrative organization things of working as a cosplayer during Gamescom. But I have to remind you that this used to be a crafting channel at the time where I still posted videos here that are not shorts. So I won't make uh, an, an actual tutorial about the build of this costume, but I can give you some tips or maybe some informations on what went wrong and what went right during the crafting process. Puck is mainly fabric, which is not something I usually do and not by choice. It's just that I got known for making armor weapons, wings and tails, so obviously people ask me for armor weapons, wings and tails, which means I don't get to do needlework that often. Now obviously the only way of learning a new skill is to accept a commission with a given deadline that uses said skill. I started with a mask and decided to combine 3D printing with foam to get the best of both worlds. For the 3D part, I used a scan of my head. I reconstituted a 3D model based on MRI images of my head since in France it's way cheaper than getting an actual 3D scan. <coughs> I did a 3D sculpt for the base but decided to make all the details, horns and ears out of foam since it's easier, you don't have to model them and you also don't have to send them after printing. The horns and ears are magnetic for transportation, obviously not just to get views on the internet, even if it's a great thing as well, but the main goal was to put it in a crate to take the train and go to Germany. And now for the pièce de résistance, the coat. It is full of embroidery and it was a good reason for me to actually get an embroidery machine. I've wanted one for a long time. And I thought that the very repetitive pattern was suited for machine embroidery as opposed to hand embroidery. 
if it makes sense, it does not. No, I, I really just wanted an embroidery machine. For each part, I had to make the fabric patterns, draw the embroidery digitally, turn it into something that the embroidery machine could understand, choose the stitches and all that stuff. And given the size of some of the patterns, I had to make them in several parts, which means you have to align all the embroideries in the machine. And if you mess up, it's ruined. You have to start again since it will leave a lot of holes in your fabric and it's usually not salvageable. It was a stressful process, especially since you have to watch your machine or at least listen to it at all times. It can happen that a needle breaks or your thread breaks, especially on metallic thread since it's a particular type of material. If your needle breaks, it won't stop and it will keep going up and down, destroying your fabric or even damaging your machine depending on where the broken pieces went. So unlike 3D printing, you cannot just start and do something else in the meantime, you still have to listen to it or even watch what's going on with the machine. I'd like to say a word about the footwear. I wanted to use a regular shoe as a base and then modify it to match the characters. The perfect shape for the base was regular men dress shoes which usually start at least in this country and in physical stores at 40 or 41 European size and I'm a 38. I ended up buying the smallest ones I could find and then added padding and soles to make sure my foot actually stayed inside. I covered them in leather, added all the embroidery, made them longer to match the character reference. Another useless piece of intel the bow was made with the bottom of a curtain that was too long. They love the shoes even though they are not often looked at. I did not make the gloves and socks, which is fine, it's not a cosplay contest, you don't have to make everything from scratch, as long as the client is happy and it matches what you are being told to do, it is fine to buy some part of your costume or modify existing objects to get what you need. I got my gloves secondhand for a very nice family of artists who were extremely excited about the costume so I showed them the finished uh, suit afterwards since they asked me to send a photo. Thank you for the gloves, they matched the style perfectly. And then came the big event, Gamescom. It was my first time actually meeting the people I worked for, so employees of the gaming agency and some members of the games team. And there is nothing quite like getting praise from the team that actually created your character. One thing I was afraid of at Gamescom, apart from the reaction of the team and the agency, was the temperature. It takes place at the end of August, where I am from it would still be very warm. I was supposed to be wearing a full mask, a velvet coat, wool socks, with thousands of people around me further raising the indoor temperature. But they had AC. I was warm, obviously, but I wasn't actively dying from heat stroke as expected, which was a relief. I stayed four days on the booth as Puck. They had a life-size replica of the portal you see in the game, which was visible from far away, so visitors could come and have their photo taken, either alone or with us, us being uh, me, of course. And there was Mile to Wonderland portraying the lady in red, who is another character. If you were at Gamescom and took a photo with us, I would love to see it. A lot of strange things happened as well. I ran into people I had previously seen at the Cannes Film Festival. Among, you know, hundreds of thousands of attendees, I saw them. Again. They might be following me after all. Or am I the one following them? We will never know. I also have a WhatsApp conversation with the community manager in which you can read The Pigeon knew me. The Pigeon is British. If you are The Pigeon and are currently watching this video, just know this. I love you. Many thanks to Player4, the agency, Inflection Games, the dev team, Mile to Wonderland, the second character on the booth, Dr. Sparker, who was my photographer and also my helper for this event, I probably forgot a lot of people, I'm very sorry if I did. Oh, many thanks to the pigeon for just existing. I forgot Level Infinite despite their name being written everywhere. Sorry. I hope I will be able to return to Gamescom this year. If you have any questions regarding cosplay contracts on this type of event or technical questions, please write me a comment and I will try to answer.
In the next episode, I will try to explain how I ended up dressing up as an astronaut to meet actual astronauts in the Netherlands. Until then, please don't subscribe. I would not subscribe. I don't know if you can even subscribe to your own channel or if you have to create another channel in order to gain one subscriber on your main channel. I do have a secondary... Well, it's not a secondary channel, I have a free channel. I have an old YouTube channel where I was still doing Minecraft video because we have all done Minecraft video at some point in time. And it's not used anymore. And then I have one, I have one about... Well, I have one that was in French because I was trying to have a, another channel in, in French. But I don't even have time to make videos in English. So why would I have time to make them in French? Well, technically I would have more time to make them in French since it's my main language. So it's easier to edit the videos. Well, I don't know. I hope I will see the pigeon again in another event. I know the costume was yeah, in one of the conventions in England. Which one is it? They have many conventions in England. Well, I wasn't there, but I know the pigeon was because I saw photos.